Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt. This is my wife, Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching Moneyball. What do you know about this movie? This won our sports Patreon poll. Yes, so we would like to thank all our patrons for voting for this to win our sports Patreon poll. And to be perfectly honest, until about 30 minutes ago, I thought this film was about pool. Oh, okay. But I think it's about baseball. It is definitely a baseball movie. I have not seen this movie. I have seen, I think maybe the first 30 to 45 minutes of this movie. I went to the dentist and like, while you're waiting for the dentist, they had a TV and like headphones and then they just like gave you Netflix. And I was like, okay. So a couple of our friends highly recommended this movie. So I was just like, whatever, I'll, I'll turn it on. I doubt we're ever gonna watch this on the, on the channel. So I watched maybe like the first 30 to 45 minutes of the movie. It was great. I really enjoyed it. And then the dentist came in and then that was the end of it. So I know a little bit of this movie. So we will just consider this your first time watching, but I think you're going to enjoy this movie. It's not like a traditional sports movie. All right. I don't know what this is about. Brad Pitt. There were some other big names on the movie poster. I think Jonah Hill. Yeah. And uh, Chris Pratt. Okay. I think there was a good chunk of names at the top, but that's all I remember right now. So I'm super excited. I mean, we've watched a handful of sports movies on the channel. Mm -hmm. They're always feel good. Sometimes some of the movies we watch, maybe they're just like super action or super comedic, super sad or something. But sports movies tend to be a little bit more like uplifting and hopeful yeah. for the most part. I don't know how this one ends, but I'm super excited. Yeah, me too. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on our Twitch, Instagram, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. Elimination game. Oof. It's quite a difference. That's still how baseball works? I don't know if they have like a cap or anything. Yeah. Another trip to the league championship series. What happened? <laughs> Always got to root for the underdog. <laughs> yeah. They're they offering can do whatever $120 they want. million dollars of Yankees have deeper pockets. Oh, wow. Got all the money in the world. Like insult to injury. You'll do better next year. We're not going to do better next year. Billy. I need more money and I will get you that championship team. We're a small market team and you're a small market GM. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they don't have money. They don't have it. I got Johnny for 7.5. Boston just upped it to 7.75. Damn. Congratulations, asshole. You win. Oof. I like Geronimo. Yes. Yeah, he's got a beautiful swing, right, Barry? Perfect. If he's a good hitter, why doesn't he hit good? You gotta pick who they can afford. I, I like Perez. Got an ugly girlfriend. Ugly girlfriend means no confidence, okay? It's a very interesting... Breakdown of... Yeah. There are rich teams and there are poor teams. 50 feet of crap. <laughs> and then there's us. It's an unfair game. Yeah, is that how it still is? We got to think differently. What happens to the runt of the litter? He dies. Do the job of replacing Giambi. Can we afford him? No, no. Nope. Definitely what not. What the fuck are you talking about? Didn't really uh, make much headway with them. No. He also didn't really offer a solution. He just reiterated the issue. Right. Huh. This now, is a different team's office? Yeah. What are you looking for? I'm thinking Ricardo Rincon. Even if you could afford him, we're not about to let him go. In your price range, no disrespect. Enough, Mark. Damn, out of no disrespect. I can give you Guthrie if you kick in some cash. Oh man, so much secrecy. I'm just gonna outright just be so like, Garcia's no. So Garcia's gonna be a no. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's gonna be a hard no on Garcia. What are we doing here, Mark? Not much. Who are you? I'm Peter Brand. What do you do? Says no. <laughs> Mostly player analysis right now. Why does Mark listen to you? Right, has a lot of power in that room. What happened in that room? I'm not quite sure what you're asking me, Mr. Bean. Yeah, how'd you shut it down? People who run ball clubs, they, they think in terms of buying players. Your goal should be to buy wins. And if I say it to anybody, I'm, I'm ostracized. I think it opens up all kinds of interesting possibilities. How much to get Pete? Yale, economics, baseball. You're funny, Pete. <laughs> He was looking at it differently. Which is what he needs. Stanford on a full scholarship. He would have to pick one or the other. <sighs> it's a crazy decision for like kids to make. Yeah. You drafted me in the first round. After I left, you looked me up in your computer. <laughs> 
out of taking you the ninth round. Ooh. Pack your bags, Pete. I just bought you from the Cleveland Indians. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. I like how he made that decision before Pete answered that question, but Pete answered that question probably the correct way. Yeah. Harsh way, but... I think Pete's always gonna be honest. Peter Brand. Really? How are you? Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> nice to see you. Good to have you here. Excited. I wanted you to see these player evaluations that you asked me to do. I asked you to do three. How many did you do? 47. <laughs> Overachiever. Actually, 51. I don't know why I lied just now. <laughs> I guess he won't always tell the truth. <laughs> Eventually. Why don't you walk me through the board? Score at least 814 runs and allow no more than 645 runs. Break it all down. It's just an equation. It's about getting things down to one number. People are overlooked for a variety of biased reasons. Like having an ugly girlfriend? Bill James and mathematics cut straight through that. I believe that there is a championship team that we could afford. It's pretty cool. He's a relief pitcher. His defect is that he throws funny. Oh, whoa. This guy should cost $3 million a year. We can get him for $237,000. Damn. But damn, I feel bad for him. <laughs> right? That was like so inspiring and then it just cut, <laughs> no music. Is that it? Yeah. It's roster? Yeah, the 25 players. I totally forgot that Philip Seymour Hoffman's in this. <laughs> One-year contract means the same thing to a manager as it does to a player. Not a lot of faith there. Yeah, right? If you lose the last game of the season, nobody gives a shit. Who do you want to talk about first? This is not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like Pete was saying, when he talks about this, he gets ostracized. Jambi's on-base percentage was 477. Damon's 324. Add that up and you get... 1092. Does Pete really need to be here? Yes, he does. Poor Pete. Jason's little brother, Jeremy. Reports about him on the weed and the strip clubs. Well, his on-base percentage is all we're looking at now. Not the weed. <laughs> David Justice. Oh, no. Oh, no. Steinbrenner's so pissed at his decline, willing to eat a big chunk of his contract just to get rid of him. Anybody exactly. Can. Yep, exactly. Scott Hatterberg. Who? Hatterberg. <laughs> Who? I know Boston wants to cut him, and no one wants to pick him up. What can he do? Check your reports, or I'm going to point at Pete. <laughs> Do I care if it's a walk or a hit? You do not. <laughs> he answers to no one except ownership and God. We make suggestions, he makes decisions. Nice. Make this ball club better and you're shitting all over it. That is also true. None of those three guys knows how to play first base. Well, you're gonna have to teach one of them. Which one? Teach all of them and see who's the best. <laughs> Hello? It's Billy Bean of the Oakland days. You wanna let us in? <laughs> How's the elbow, Scott? I can't throw the ball. We want you at first. I've only ever played catcher. It's not that hard, Scott. Tell him, watch. It's incredibly hard. <laughs> this is a contract to play ball for the Oakland A's. Discuss with your wife. Let us know. I mean, not much to discuss. No one else wants them. Yeah. Do you want to play baseball or not? I think that's pretty much where I left off, because I remember the conversation with Chris Pratt. OK. So now we're all new here. <laughs> Hey, Hi, Billy. She ready? Oh, shit, wrong, right. out with friends. I probably would have remembered Jenny if I saw her. <laughs> so <laughs> I must have stopped there. You good, Billy? Yeah, good. How are you, Alan? What a place. I know. How is the team shaping up? Uh, rebuilding. You're going to be fine, though. You always figure something out. <laughs> this little, is so awkward. A little bit of tension. I just talked to her in her cell. She's coming up the hill. She's got a cell phone? Big parenting decision. Oof. If you have any objections, of course. And she already has it. Her mother and I will discuss it. I feel like Alan's trying pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. Sing a little for your dad. I'm just a little bit caught in the middle. I've got to let it go. What a song. Ooh. So he took the Mets. No Stanford. He didn't pan out. That happens every year. Damn. To be confident, that's when you've got something. Oh, for the A's? Things don't pan out. You move on. That's baseball. Damn, just didn't make the transition. You're discounting what scouts have done for 150 years, even yourself? Adapt or die. Yeah, right? I mean, scouts were wrong on him. You're not going to win. Catastrophic season you're about to set us all up for. Oh. Good luck, Art. <laughs> Art was just wants to get paid. <laughs> just you and me, Pete. We're all in. This had to have been such a shock. 
He is a freak and not in a good way. I have my doubts. He's gotten old. Just so much like negative talking. Billy, I think we ought to talk about Hatterberg. He lacks confidence. We'll give him some. Yeah, right? You got six weeks. Six weeks to learn a new position. There you go. There you Scotty go. H. That's what I'm talking about. Give him that confidence. Yeah. This better work. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. No, you're not. <laughs> no pressure. It's a dollar, lady. Welcome to Oakland, DJ. <laughs> Damn, kind of pay for Pepsi. They're getting a deal with you. The Yankees are paying Jason a whole lot of money. Damn. How does that make you feel? Terrible. Oh, I'm scared. Text me to play by play. What? Why? I don't watch the games. Superstitious. Oh, they didn't put him at first? It doesn't matter what moves I make if you don't play the team the way they're designed to be played. Anything else. Damn, it's not buying in. Every time we talk, I'm reinvigorated by my love of the game. <laughs> well, it did not go well. No, but it wasn't the plan. played. Yeah. yeah. Book on baseball statistics, a security guard at a pork and beans company. Dang, I mean, good ideas come from anywhere. He's tried to come up with a new approach. It won't work. And that is the game. Seattle is 13 and three. 13 and three, so we're well into the season. Yeah. I want you to go on the road with the team. I can't develop personal relationships. You gotta be able to sometimes cut them. Let's practice. You've been a huge part of this team. You're cutting me. I just bought a house here. Oh. My kid just started a new school. Damn. You shouldn't pull him out in the middle of the school year. You, you <laughs> should wait. What the hell are you talking? <laughs> just be straight with him. Pete, I gotta let you go. Jack's office will handle the details. Short and sweet. Go on the road with the team. I mean, he's been evaluating, like, as they go. This is like an evolving algorithm. Yeah. How come your boss doesn't travel with the team? Is that supposed to make us easier to cut? Yep. And how come soda is a dollar in the clubhouse? Billy likes to keep the money on the field. Soda money? <laughs> he's not buying any of it. Credibly have lost 14 of their last 17. Damn. This is not about statistics. This is a game about people. It's all statistics. Start thinking about getting a new GM here. You seem to be on the same, like... Wavelength? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Can't have Billy doing one thing and then the coach doing something else. Yeah, I mean, the media's been brutal to him this season. Mm -hmm. I believe in what we're doing. Our sample size has just honestly been too small this far. Too early. By mid-July, within seven games at first. Nothing. Ooh. Dad, there's, there's no way you're going to lose your job, right? Oh. I'm sure she hears all this stuff. Well, I go on the internet sometimes. Well, don't do that. <laughs> but if you lose your job, will you have to move away? You don't have to worry. You're not worried, right? No. Yeah, that's brutal. That's probably way worse than anything the media has said. Yep. Pena. Okay. I'm playing my team in a way that I can explain in job interviews next winter. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have the assurance that he's going to be around either. I mean, at this point, what does he have to lose just trying it for one game? Right? I mean, their record's so bad. Might as well switch it up. First one out of the dugout is rookie sensation Carlos Pena. Nope. Uh... Oh, not a word? That might be worse. Didn't they lose? Is losing fun? No. What are you having fun for? That's what losing sounds like. Silence. I mean, I feel like no one's taking this plan seriously. No. The, the team's not, the coach or manager or whatever is not. Got to find a way to make everyone buy in. Yeah, it's the only way it's going to work. Ed, it's Billy. I need a little help on defense. I'm willing to trade Jeremy John before it. What are you doing? <laughs> Cleaning house. Oh, man. And Pena's going too. I want Hatterberg in the lineup tonight. Oh, so they're going to get rid of him? Yeah, just get rid of him. Force the situation. These are hard moves to explain to people. Why is that a problem, Pete? Yeah, right? Pena's going on the block. You're my first call. I want a reliever in cash. The Hatterberg thing doesn't work out the way that we want it to. I mean, it's already not working. Do you believe in this thing or not? I do. Then go for it. He got rid of Giambi. Yeah. That was part of his plan. 
you project will win more with Hatterberg or Pena at first? Theoretically, Hatterberg. And do what it. What are we talking about then? Maybe he's getting rid of Giambi because he was dancing after the loss, so he wants that type of energy out. I need one more thing. Soda. I want you to stock my machine for three years. No way. Go tell Pena he's got a pack. Oh no, he's making him do it? You oh, practice. shoot. Excuse me, Carlos. Can I speak with you for a minute? No oh. way. I mean, he's not being cut, he's getting traded, so that's not as bad. Carlos, you've been traded to the Tigers. This is Jay Palmer's number. He's expecting your call, we'll take care of everything. We're the Tigers. I have no idea. Is that it? Yes. Good job. I feel bad for him though. Which one? Pina. <laughs> he's gonna throw up. <laughs> <laughs> he did it though. I mean, I'm sure it sucks to get traded. Just uproot your life. Take a seat. Oh, now he's gonna tell him. Just force his hand. You can't start paying your first tonight. He plays for Detroit now. Hey, Detroit Tigers. You traded Pena. You are outside your mind. Wanna see me? Yeah, Jeremy, grab a seat. <laughs> oh. Jeremy, you've been traded to the Phillies. You're a good ball player. We wish you the best. Dang. Jeremy's gone too. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this all day long. Play who he wants or they're getting traded. You agree with this? 100%. Mostly his plan. You want the store closed? <laughs> you gotta tell everybody else now? I think so. You may not look like a winning team, but you are one. So, play like one tonight. That was terrible. <laughs> well, that's why he's a GM and not the coach. <laughs> when you're getting your pitch, you're hitting 625. Every first pitch strike, your batting average goes down about 75 points. Damn. And I want you taking the bats off the 10th and 11th pitcher by the end of the series. You're finally, like, buying in and coaching everyone up. Never seen a GM talk to players like that. You never seen a GM who was a player. I know your routine. That shit ain't for me. Oh, you're special. Maybe I am, a little bit. The Yankees are paying half your salary. That's what the Yankees think of you. Oh, just humbled him. I'm not paying you for the player you used to be. I'm paying you for the player you are right now. Make an example for the younger guys. Be a leader. All right. We're cool. Cool. Damn. He played that really well. Yeah. How are you liking first base, man? It's uh, it's coming along. Cup of noodle. What's your biggest fear? A baseball being hit in my general direction. <laughs> seriously, what is it? No, seriously, that is. Oof. Well, hey, good luck with that. <laughs> he tried so hard. I hate losing, Chavi. I hate losing more than I even want to win. Nice. Let them make the mistakes. Patient. And when, when your enemy's making mistakes, don't interrupt them. No more stealing. No stealing? I pay you to get on first, and I get thrown out a second. Oh, okay. The A's are still hitting it in. Got three wins. Well, the wild card. Oh, now they have a positive record. Three. Ball, four. Ball four. Get on base. The A's have won seven in a row. Damn. Art Howe is the reason this team is winning? Maybe. Not really. I hear seven in a row. You got Cleveland matchups. He doesn't care if Art's getting the credit. Yeah, he just wants to win. He just wants to not lose. <laughs> That's right. He hates losing more than likes winning. Hey, mix it up. Yes, sir. Trust your slide. And he's changing yeah. by getting to know the players. Hey, David. Great bats. Yeah, interacting with all of them. I remember when they traded Jeremy Giambi to Philly back in June and everyone thought they'd just given up? Not so much. <laughs> Suzanne? Ooh, trade deadline. You thinking Rincon? There's half a million on his contract, and we've got at least one other suitor. Who is it? I'd rather not say. <laughs> if we can get the Giants interested in Venifro, Mark's only got one buyer left for Rincon. Us. Oh, there you go. Take out their buyer. What do you think of Venifro? I'll think about it. Think about it and call me back. I'd call whoever's interested and see if they're still interested. No way. What a great move. Eckerton. And I like Eckerton. You don't even know who Eckerton is. <laughs> Here's the deal. I'm getting Rincon. It's a done deal. <laughs> Give me Eckerton and $225,000 in cash and the Giants can't. I'll think about it. Oh. Whoever calls me back first gets Venifro. Oh, I want this one. He's working hard. So exciting. Your pyro's on two. There you go. Okay, let me talk to my owner. I'll call you back. Hold on one second, please. Tell him I'll pay for him. Oh. When I sell him back for twice the amount next year, I keep the money. No way. Okay, thank you very much. We'll call you back. Come on! There you Come go. <laughs> Listen, I don't want Rincon pitching against me tonight. Just send him over. I got you the money. No way. I don't want to dampen the mood at all. We got to send someone down. Oh. 
I know I've been struggling lately. No, don't talk. I need you to stop getting dressed. Traded? Worse than traded, I assume. Sorry for the crap news. Mike, I can't have 26 guys in the clubhouse. I get it. Oh. Man, to go from such like a high moment of getting someone that you really want, but then realizing you have to just crush someone's whole life. 12 straight wins for the Athletics. All-time record of 20 does not seem impossible anymore. That's crazy. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Number 17. I want to see how Art's doing now. Now that they're dominating? Yeah. Oh man, that's insane. Billy, it's me. Sharon? I just wanted to say, you did good, Billy. I appreciate it, Sharon. Turn around, please, Dad. No way, Jose. <laughs> Doesn't watch the games. You're not gonna jinx it. I'll talk to you later, sweetheart. The fact that this is so, like, analytical and everything, but he still has his superstitions. Yeah. The A scored six in the first, <laughs> one in the second, and four in the third. Oh shit. <laughs> Man, going to the game. The feeling in that stadium. Waiting for that 20th win. Oh, fuck. Just back out. Yeah, right? Get out of here. Oh, I don't like the music change. Oh, what? Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, leave. You might oh, have already done too much. that sucks. And the A's are now lead by a score of 11 to 3. You don't want to give teams life. Yeah, you just gave them so much life. Damn, that's a home run. Oh, my God. Around 13 for the plate. Here comes the tying run. No, fuck. 11 11? Damn, he should not have come to this game. Patty, grab a bat. You're hitting for Burnsy. Come on, let's go. This is different. Let's go. Oh. No way. <laughs> oh, I got chills. Walk off home run. You didn't curse them. <laughs> it's hard not to be romantic about baseball. I'm not in it for a record. If we don't win the last game of the series, they'll dismiss us. None of it'll matter. It's too much pressure. Yeah. If we win on our budget with this team, we'll change the game. It's true. And that's what I want. I want it to mean something. I mean, that's the most lasting impact. Oh, fuck. The Oakland A's were fundamentally not a sound baseball team. Damn, just like that? Can't approach baseball from a statistical bean counting point of view. Nobody oh. reinvents this game. That sucked. That's what Billy was saying. They're just already erasing it. Steve told me he's offering you a new contract. So why did you return my call? Because it's the Red Sox. Yeah. You won the exact same number of games that the Yankees won, 1.4 million per win, and you paid 260,000. Damn. This is threatening, not just a way of doing business, but, it's, but in their minds, it's threatening the game. Yeah, he disrupted everything. Anybody who's not tearing their team down right now using your model, they're dinosaurs. Yeah. Oh, shit. I want you to be my general manager. That had to be an insane amount of money. Yeah. But he can't go without Pete. Yeah, he has to take Pete with him. But then you're also like leaving this team you built. Did Henry make you a good offer at least? Doesn't matter. What was it? Doesn't matter. What was it? That makes you the highest paid GM in the history of sports. Whoa. I made one decision in my life based on money. And I swore I would never do it again. You're doing it for what the money says. That they're worth it. It like validates the yeah, whole... Yeah, this is worth it. I really wanted to win here. I think you won pretty big, Billy. Come with me to the video room. Scared to run to second base. Jeremy's gonna do what he never does. He's gonna round first and he's gonna go for it. Oh. All of Jeremy's nightmares, Jeremy's about to realize that the ball went 60 feet over the fence. <gasps> no way. He hit a home run? <laughs> he hit a home run and didn't even realize it.
It's like how Billy hit a home run without really realizing it. <laughs> <laughs> how can you not be romantic about baseball? It's a metaphor. I know it's a metaphor. <laughs> You're a good egg. I'll call you. Let me know if you change your mind and stay in California. I'm just a little bit caught in the middle. Sounds so personal. Wow, turn it down. Oh, he hasn't won yet? Dang. All right, that was Moneyball. What'd you think? I loved that. Yeah? That was so good. I mean, that is definitely a very unique sports movie. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's entirely about sports, but you're taking that, like, inside look to how a team is constructed. It's just a very different approach to a sports movie, I feel like, but that was fantastic. So good. I enjoy going to a baseball game. Yeah. I don't know that much about baseball. I like the atmosphere, but all like the technical aspects of baseball, I couldn't really tell you. I mean, I have a success story of baseball. When I was like five or whatever, I hit a grand slam on my birthday for like the championship game. I mean, everything. I remember like running and I caught up to like the person who was on first and I was like, run, run. <laughs> there is something romantic about baseball. Yeah. But just like you, since that moment, I don't know anything about baseball really. Like we don't watch it on TV. We go to baseball games and it's always a blast. Yeah. But seeing baseball through like this vision, it was just so incredibly complex and beautiful. Something completely different. Absolutely. And like you said, before before we watch the movie, sports films are generally really uplifting. Yeah. Obviously, the very end there is not what we wanted to see. No. But that's oftentimes what happens when it's based on a true story. I assume it's based off of a true story. I mean, we had like the update at the end and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we can look after the fact. It would be like another Fargo situation if it's actually not true at all. <laughs> oh, I would be so mad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously that ending was pretty brutal. I mean, you're on this massive high of this 20 win streak and then it just shows you one out at the bottom of the ninth or something like that. And it's just like, bang, eliminated. And then exactly like Billy was talking about, it's like, if we don't win the very last game, everyone's just gonna disregard how we're trying to change the game fundamentally. And that's exactly what the media was doing. Mm -hmm. And then he doesn't take the offer to be the most successful GM. And kind of like Pete was saying, it's like, it's not about the money, it's what the money shows. And it's like, if he would have taken that, it would have just validated that, hey, we are doing something correct here. He didn't do that but then they won anyways, embracing their philosophy. Yeah, so it still was validated Yeah. to an extent. But he just wasn't a part of it and he's still waiting for that last win of the season. That was tough to read that, but for a lot of the films that we watched, I always say like my cheeks hurt and everything with most comedies that we watch. Yeah. But it was the same with this film. I would agree, yeah. There was a moment in the film that I was like, oh man, like- <laughs> Ow, <laughs> why am I so smiling so much. <laughs> Honestly, it was just really cool to see how it all got put together. I mean, some of our friends are like massive baseball fans. They're absolutely gonna kill us, including our editor for this film. <laughs> but I wanna know, like, is that still a thing? Like, is this money discrepancy still a thing? I don't know. I probably know football the most, yeah. and they have like a cap that everyone gets relatively close to. I mean, there's some organizations that just like still don't spend that much money, but for the most part, it's relatively, actually, I don't know. It's hard to say because there's so many like ways around it yeah where it's like if your owner is filthy rich they can put more money into escrow so that they can pay out these bigger bonuses and like make these bigger contracts so technically everyone can spend the same amount of money but it still comes down to how much money your owner has and this was huge like this was a huge discrepancy and this was insane i mean like the yankees were like three times as much money boston red sox guy broke it down he was like a million per win and then they spent like two hundred sixty thousand per win mm -hmm. so i mean that's like four to five times as much per win like that's yeah. insane so seeing that they were able to like use statistics in order to like kind of play the game on the side that they could yeah was so cool that room full of scouts like jonah hill's character pete had said that he just kind of gets ostracized yeah and that's exactly what happened they weren't having any of it and this is actually like a discussion that i've had like at 
my work and stuff too is that if you're not like moving with the times like there's a problem and that's exactly how this was like they were like so for like they know better same with art as well like he obviously had to work with what he had but he was still not working it in the way that it was meant to be yeah he was still resisting this change Mm -hmm. And the change was coming from an analytical viewpoint from an economist, not even. I mean, the fact that this was originated from a security guard at like a, I don't know, chop house or whatever you would call it or whatever it was. That was cool. New ideas can come from anywhere, anyone or something, and it can just completely change everything. So Billy saw that there needed to be a change. He couldn't play the same game that all of these other clubs with tons of money had so he needed to have his own game the fact that he was able to embrace that but yeah i mean like you said it's difficult to kind of make certain people adapt or embrace the change because you just kind of get stuck in your way or the status quo there's so many great scenes in this movie but that's easily one of them is when he's in there with Pete for the first time, like throwing these names on the board and everyone's just like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. what are we doing here? But I assume that's the way the game is still played. I mean, everything comes down to analytics. Mm -hmm. and, and even if you watch stuff for like the NFL draft is probably like the, like the biggest show draft wise. Every team has just a whole team of just people who all they do is just look at the analytical numbers. I mean, they probably don't even watch film. They just probably break it down onto a spreadsheet yep. and you get one little value. Is this person worth it or not? Yeah. It's just insane to kind of see the birth of that at least I assume so in this. And that was such an incredible experience to witness this in a movie format. It was also crazy to see how people were being valued in terms of a dollar amount. For Pete to kind of come in and be like, this guy should be like 3 million, but we're gonna offer him like 275 or something. Yeah. It was like, whoa, like, I mean, good for the team. <laughs> Right. For getting someone worth that much money, but like how shitty for this guy who the stats are saying, go for it. And everyone else just sees his flaws and it's like, nah, not worth it. For those people, I mean, especially like uh, Chris Pratt's character mm -hmm. to be someone who probably thought he was never going to play baseball ever again. Yep. To be on a team that has this record of 20 wins in a season. And he was the game winning. Right, yeah, he hit the home run yeah. to seal that 20th win. I hope that's true. Yeah. That would be such a great story. This new way of thinking, it's like, yeah, sure, it sucks that these people aren't getting what they truly deserve, but they would have gotten nothing if it wasn't for this new way of evaluating their talent because they're not looking at like, oh, well, yeah, he has damaged nerves and he has an ugly girlfriend, so he doesn't have confidence and you know, he's scared to run to second base or something like you can come up with so many flaws to just push someone aside. But oftentimes like math, just the numbers, they don't lie. So it was cool to see this team assembled of people who probably were to just count it out mm -hmm. and to be so successful. I mean, yeah, sure. It sucks that they didn't win the last game, but they still did something that at least based on this movie completely changed sports at yeah, least baseball. Absolutely. I feel like one of the hardest parts to watch was Billy finally deciding that he was gonna go watch the game. Oh man. That was absolutely heart wrenching to just see them tank as soon as he got in there and to even have Pete looking at him like, oh wow, he's here. Right. And then for Pete to like witness him leave after they oh. just started just declining. Yeah, thank God they won that game. Because if they would have lost, it would have changed his superstition forever. Like yeah. he probably would never even turn on a game with the radio or anything. He would have gone the complete opposite direction. Yeah, I agree. And this movie is not like extremely long. I mean, it's just over two hours, but there are so many scenes in this. I mean, mm -hmm. like we touched on the first scene of him and Pete kind of just totally revamping the roster, but even when they're trading people the two different times, especially the one when they're trying to get Rincon or something, yeah. and it's just like this great back and forth yeah, with that was all so these exciting. other GMs. It was little sprinkled moments of the actual baseball game, but it was always great. Even some of them, like they were shot in this way where it seemed like they were the only people on the screen or in the field or something. It was just like, lit and shot differently a few times. Every single interaction between Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill was fantastic. I mean, they 
just dominated this movie. Everyone was great, yeah. but their relationship was something special. Absolutely. And speaking of just like kind of the cinematography and everything, there was like the use of music and then for it to get silent, like that happened a number of times. Yeah. When the team just starts declining in that 20th game streak, everything just gets dark. Obviously that song with his daughter was very important. Yeah, the lyrics of that song were like pretty spot on to like what he was going through in the moment. <laughs> I know, and then for it to just it kind be of dad, you're a loser. Yeah. I was like, damn. <laughs> the ending of this movie is brutal yeah. for sure. At least if Billy is a real person in real life, he gets to brag to everyone on the planet that Brad Pitt played him in a movie. <laughs> So that's an, a massive achievement. <laughs> this was such an enjoyable movie. And like I said in the intro, I had seen like the first 35, I guess maybe closer to 45 minutes, pretty much like right before Billy goes to see his ex-wife for the first time. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew like, man, this is a real strong movie. Like everything in the first 45 minutes tells you everything you need to know that this is gonna be an excellent movie. So I'm glad I was able to experience the second half of this movie. Um, and I'm glad you're able to experience the whole movie. This was such a unique way to like look at baseball because we've seen other baseball movies. Major League was fantastic. <laughs> What's the one where like build it and they will come or something like yeah. that? Yeah. I can't even think of the name of the actor. I could picture Kevin him. Costner. Kevin Costner. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, that movie. Like we've clearly seen some baseball movies. The name is just totally escaping me right now. But it's always from this aspect of the game itself pretty much. Whereas this was the construction of the team. Yeah. And it's just such a interesting way to look at things that I'm sure almost every single type of sports team construct things some sort of similar way. And I feel like after this movie, I'm going to look at some of these games or some of these teams and stuff and be like, I wonder where like they saw this value or something. I don't know. It's just going to put sports in a new perspective for me. They definitely changed the game. Yeah. All the games. <laughs> this was so enjoyable. Such a fantastic movie. I can't believe that I had never even really heard of it prior to us putting it on our poll but this is fantastic and thanks to the patrons for voting for it yeah this was excellent i had a great time so if you'd like to see the full-length reaction for this as well as everything else that we've reacted to the link to our patreon is in the description if you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media all those links are in the description as well and with that peace everyone bye bye